Hey guys, here is Gregor from Personas and today I am super excited to introduce you to a brand new Studio One extension called Harmony Wizard, developed by my good friend Lukas Ruschitzka, who many of you might know as a Studio One expert and MIDI guru in the Studio One community. He's always there to help you out with any questions that you might have and um, he's also contributed many of the note actions that we have since Studio One version 4.5. I've covered those already in great detail back then and if you want to see a quick refresher on all the functions you can do thanks to Lucas then check out my video that's linked right here. But today I want to focus on Harmony Wizard which is the new Studio One extension that Lucas is releasing and what is Harmony Wizard? Well it is a chord tool in the most broad sense which you can use to manipulate existing chords or extract harmonies from melodies. You can even generate entire orchestras and orchestra voicings from the chord track. You can also use it as a brilliant happy accidents tool. It's incredibly deep but even if you don't have like a really deep music theory understanding you can still use this to great effect which I can hopefully demonstrate to you today because I don't know very much music theory to be honest and I can still get some incredible results out of this. So it's already an indispensable tool in my workflow and hopefully it can be the same for you. So let's dive right in. In this example here I'm working on a new song idea that I had and um, I don't have any chords for it yet as you can see. I just have like a bass line, a basic beat and a melody going on. So let's take a listen real quick. Right? So this is kind of what I can do. I can do like two finger keyboard playing and things like that. But when it comes to chords, I'm not really that well versed. And if you ask me what scale is this in, I would already have to scratch my head a little bit. And um, yeah, I guess that is one of the consequences of being a self-taught music producer and focusing more on the audio engineering side of things, right? But let's see how Harmony Wizard can help me to boost my creativity even in the chord department where I might not be the biggest expert. So after purchasing Harmony Wizard, you can simply drag and drop the install file into Studio One. That's all you have to do to install it. And to verify that it actually worked, you should quickly open up the note editor and go to the actions because here you should see a ton of new entries in the chord menu. And these are kind of the commands that all of the functions inside of Harmony Wizard are based on. So if you know exactly what you want, if you know your music theory inside and out if you're a scoring composer or things like that. Those menus are letting you dive insanely deep. You can apply chords and scales from the chord track. You could generate an entire orchestra voicing from the chord track which I'm going to show you later. You can select voice and chords. You can invert chords. You can double at intervals. You can create chords with incredibly sophisticated settings. So if you know what you're doing this is the ultimate nerdy playground. But if you're like me and you just want to have some presets, some starting points for happy accidents and things like that, then you should go to the macro toolbar Harmony Wizard, which is what I'm going to focus on in this video, because that's really where the benefit is for people like me who are kind of self-taught and not as deep into the weeds as Lucas might be, right? So to open up the macro toolbar, you can do that either from the arrangement up here, or you can also do that here in the note editor, which is what I usually recommend because the note editor is where we edit MIDI notes and that is what Harmony Wizard is designed to do, right? So we just open it up right here and then we switch from the global page to the new page that we find in here, Harmony Wizard. And the way this is structured is kind of genius. So first of all, you have to detect the scale of your song for any of this to work as expected. And in my case, I haven't really done that because like I said, I don't know my scales too well. And all I need to do is just select the lead melody or the bass line also works fine and hit detect. And now you can see that the scale has been changed from C chromatic to A natural minor. I happen to know that's correct because A natural minor is one of the few scales that I know. It's just the white keys and the root keys A. So that's what I actually used indeed in the song. So that's correct. 
And um, yeah, once I've detected the scale, I can then go ahead and insert brand new chords or bass lines from scratch, from nothing, right? So that would be the very first menu group. But what I can also do is harmonize, meaning create chords from either bass lines or melodies. And that's what I want to show you right now. So let's, for example, use the bass line that I have right here. And let's say I want to generate a chord progression from that. So how do I do this? Well, first of all, I just copy and paste this over to my pad right here. So now it sounds like this. It's still the same notes. And now I can use Harmony Wizard to brilliantly create a chord progression from this. How do I do that? Well, I just go to Harmonize Melody with the scale since that's what I want to base the new chord progression on. And then I can go to add second voice with selected scale and then maybe above melody and see what that sounds like. That's super cool, right? Maybe I can add another second voice on top of that, maybe with random chords in scale and uh, above melody white. I'm not sure what that does, but let's see. I mean, this is a tool for happy accidents. Okay, let's see what it did. I mean, how cool is that, right? I would have never come up with this myself. And of course, I can just use that as a starting point in case I'm not happy with some of these chords that were generated. It's as easy as just selecting those I don't like. I can also navigate the chords back and forth here, which is kind of neat. And then you go to the edit chord notes, which is for altering existing chords that were generated. And then I could just, you know, create an alternative chord, keeping either the lowest or the highest notes so adjusting the result is entirely possible at all times. But what you can also do, and that is probably one of my favorite features of Harmony Wizard, is strum existing chords or change their rhythmical pattern to make them more interesting. Let me show you. So here I have a guitar part or what's supposed to be a guitar part. Right now it sounds really like nothing. And I would like to animate these notes a bit more, you know, make them seem as if they were played by an actual person and not by one of these sample players. And so I can go to the strum button here in Harmony Wizard. And in the strum mode, basically what this does is distribute the chord notes rhythmically so they're not all played at the same time, but with a bit of an offset. And 100% um, would be one beat offset. That's maybe a bit much. So let's do 25% or so. Hit OK. And so I can also change the strum direction. So for example, all of them can be in the upward direction. That means the lowest is first. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see that. Let me just undo. I could have also done alternates. So in this mode, now you see that here, the lowest note is first, but on the next one, it's the last. And this makes it a bit more interesting maybe. And let's listen what that has actually done. Super interesting, right? Maybe the offset was a bit much. So let me decrease the amount a tiny bit like so. Super good. This would have taken me so long if I did this by hand. And I really can't emphasize enough that this is just the tip of the iceberg here. You can even generate an entire orchestra with this tool from the chord track. Let me show you. So here I have like a chord track from a different production and I just removed all of the notes that were there before. And now I select all of these tracks by holding down shift and I go to insert chords, arrange chords on selected tracks. And now I'm just gonna go for full orchestra. And just like that, I've generated dedicated orchestra voicings from the chord track with just one command, which is insane. 
I want to finish this brief overview video of Harmony Wizard with one of my favorite functions that I like to use in a way that Lucas might not have anticipated and that is the chop function. Now this is basically meant for chopping chords as the name of the command suggests but this actually also really works wonders when recreating rhythmical patterns for bass lines and drums. So in this song here I have a bass line that's a little bit stale and it needs a bit more groove. Take a listen. Right, and here the chop command can really work wonders. So I click on chop and then I'm just gonna use one of the rhythm presets. Of course, I could use many of these functions here, which would be super sophisticated, but I really just like the rhythm presets here. And uh, let me go with, for example, EDM1 and see what that does to my existing baseline. This is amazing to give me like a quick idea or to show me what else I could do in this song and get me inspired. I also really love the pop preset because that changes the entire distribution and length of the notes and would sound like this. What? I have not expected that, but this is once again one of the many reasons why this is such a happy accidents tool for me. So I hope you check out Harmony Wizard. I think it's one of the most exciting Studio One extensions we had to date. And thank you so much for watching.